In this video, I am going to teach you how to build a web page in HTML. First open Notepad. Then, on the top of the page, type in the opening HTML tag. This tag has an opening bracket, a closing bracket, and the letters HTML in between them. Then on the bottom of the page, you type in the closing HTML tag. This tag has an opening bracket, a forward slash, the letters HTML, and a closing bracket. There are two sections to any web page. First there is the head section, which are opening and closing tags with the word head in between them. Then there is the body section, which is an opening tag, a closing tag, and the word body in between them. These by the way, are nested between the two HTML tags that we already made, and of course you are also going to want to give your web page a title. So what you do is make an opening and closing tag with the word title in between them, and type the title of your page in between those tags. All of this, by the way, goes in between the opening and closing head tag, and now you are going to add the content to your page. For demonstration purposes, I will make two simple paragraphs. First you make opening and closing tags with the letter P in between them. Then you type your first paragraph in between those two tags. In order to make the second paragraph all you do is type in the opening and closing P tags, and type your second paragraph in between them. So your notepad should look something like this. By now you will probably want to see what your web page looks like. So you click on File, then click on Save As. Then this window will pop up. This part is very important. You have to save your web page file with a .html extension. So in that little box, you type the name of your file .html, like this. If you don't save it with the .html extension, it will save as a text file. Then it would only open up in Notepad. Instead we want it to open up in the browser. And when we do, we can see that our web page looks like this. But that looks pretty lame, doesn't it? In which case we tweak it a little bit. First we'll center everything. We go back into Notepad and focus in between the body tags, where we will enter our center tags. We will put an opening center tag, and a closing center tag, and remember that everything in between them will be centered. Then we save it. When we open it up in our browser, we see it looks like this. And although that helps, the page still looks pretty lame. So we should maybe put in a header. There are six sizes of headers to choose from, which is done like this. First I'll set up a second page to demonstrate how the header tags work, and save it. Then we'll put in the center tags, then we add an opening and closing tag with the letter H and the number 1 in it. We type in what we want our header to say between these two tags. Save it. Then when we open it up in the browser, we see that our header shows up in big black letters. But as I said, there are 6 sizes of headers. All you do is replace the number 1 in the header tag with a 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. And remember that H1 is the biggest, H6 is the smallest. Save it. And when we open it up in Internet Explorer, we can see that each header gets smaller as the number grows larger. Each of these may or may not be used in different places on your web page. So what I will do is copy the largest header for our web page, paste it into our original page, just under the opening center tag, save it, and when we open it up in our browser, our page now looks like this. But we're not done yet. We still need to learn to add a graphic or picture to our web page. And in case you don't know how to make a picture for your web page, I will quickly show you. First we open up Paint, which is a drawing program that comes with Windows. Draw a picture, using the tools and color palettes. Click on File, then Save As, and save it as a GIF file. And then we put our picture into our web page. To do this there is a special tag. This tag has slightly different features than the other tags we have been working with, which I will show you now. This tag is called the Image Source tag, and it works like this. As you can see this tag is a little more complex than the others. The IMG that you see stands for Image, the SRC stands for Source. This is followed by the equals sign, and the name of our picture file in between quotes. This tag tells the browser which picture to show. And we'll paste that tag just above our header tag, and below the center tag, to keep it centered. Save it. We open it up in the browser, and we see that it looks like this. And our picture looks a little too big doesn't it? So we will make a slight modification to our image source tag. We will start with our original image source tag. And at the end of our image source tag, we will add in the word height, followed by the equals sign, and finally the number of pixels high you want it to be, and put that number between quotation marks. For demonstration purposes, I will use 100 pixels. Save it. And when we open it up in the browser, we see that our web page looks like this. And that is much better, isn't it? But let's not forget, we need to add some links to our web page. For what is a web page without links? And for this we use what is called the anchor tag. This tag anchors a link to a block of text or an image, and looks like this. The anchor tag starts with an opening bracket followed by the letter A, then href, the equals sign, a set of quotes and a closing bracket. There is also a closing anchor tag with the letter A in it. To make your link, with this tag, you put the URL in between the quotes. For demonstration purposes, I will use one of my favorite websites. So I type in the URL to my favorite website between the two quotes in the opening anchor tag. 
Don't forget, it must be the complete URL, including the HTTP colon slash slash, then www.voodoohoodoo.com. Then you type in the text you want the link anchored around between the opening and closing anchor tags. Then we will paste it into the bottom of our web page, just before the closing center tag. Save it. And when we open it up in our browser, we see the link on the bottom of our page. Then when we click on that link, we go to my favorite website. And now you know how to make a simple web page in HTML. However, most web pages are a little more complex than that. They are laid out with tables and lists. I will now show you how to do this. First, I'll set up another separate page to demonstrate how tables work. Then we'll focus in between our body and center tags to create a table. We start our table by creating opening and closing tags with the word table in them. That was easy enough, but we're not quite done with these tags yet. We can define various features to our tables like this. We can tell the browser to show a border, by adding the word border, the equals sign and the number of pixels that you want your border to be. This can technically be any number, but for demonstration purposes, I will use the number one. We can also tell the browser how wide we want our table to be in relation to the page, by adding in the word width, followed by the equals sign, and I put in 80% inside of quotes. This means that my table will take up 80% of the page. Now although we've created the table, you have to think of it this way. The two tags have done nothing but made the outer shell of the table. We still have to add in rows. We do this with the table row tag, which is an opening tag and a closing tag with the letters D and R in them. To add another row, simply put in another set of table row tags after this. And now we have created a table with two rows, however, you can put in however many rows you want, but we're still not quite done with our table yet. We still have to put individual cells into each row. In the first row we will put two cells. First we'll focus in on our first row. Then we will make opening and closing tags with the letters D and D in them. We have created our first individual cell, and we type our content in between these, like this. Then to add the second cell, all you do is add your cell tags, and type your content in between. So we have completed our first row. Now on to the second. In this row I will make one cell that will take up the same space as both cells above. First we focus in on our second set of row tags, then add in our cell tags. However you will notice that I have added the word coal span equals to to the tag, with the number 2 in quotes. What this does is tells the cell to take up the space of the two first cells. Then we type in our content in between the two tags, save it, and when we open it up in the browser, we can see that our table looks like this. We also notice that although the table is centered, the cells are not. If you want them centered, you have to add the center tags in each cell, just like this. Save it, and when we open it up in the browser, we see that everything is centered neatly. And now we have created our table. So we copy our table, paste it into our web page, and when we open it up in the browser, we can see that it is really coming along. Now I will show you how to make a list. There are two types of lists to choose from. Ordered lists, which are numbered, and an ordered list which uses bullets. First we will set up a separate page to demonstrate how lists work, and save it. Then focus in between the two body tags. Then we add in an opening tag and a closing tag with the letters O and L in them. This tells the browser that we want an ordered list. Now we add in our list items. To do this we add in a set of opening and closing tags with the letters L and I in them. Then type in our list item between those two tags. To make the second list item, we simply add in another set of list item tags, with the list item typed in between them. Now we will make our bullet list. To do this, we add in an opening and closing tag with the letters U and L in them. Then we add in our list items the same way, as when we made our ordered list. Save it. And when we open it up in our browser, we see that it looks like this. Now we will copy our lists, and paste them into our web page. Save it. And when we open it up in the browser, we now see that our web page looks like this. And there you have it. Our web page is complete. By now you should have a basic understanding of HTML and how it works. There are, however, many other tags that you can use. Perhaps I will show them to you at another time. Thank you, and goodbye.